think that California continues to be a leader in recycling uh, relative to the rest of the country. One of the challenges that we have uh, is that landfill tipping fees in California are lower than they are in a number of communities in, in the East Coast. And when you have a high cost of disposal, it tends to motivate greater levels of recycling. Uh, but generally, given the fairly low cost of disposal in California, we do see that California is uh, a leader in recycling, uh, very nearly 50% recycling. The reason that we have landfills here, and they don't have them in Europe, is because in our country, the uh, uh, waste disposal is subsidized. If, you, uh, if, if you're a package producer in Europe, you have to pay to dispose of the packaging that you put into the stream of commerce. And so packagers, you, you can't get in Europe um, a, a CD that's, that's this big in, a, in, in a, a box that's this big. It's wrapped in cellophane, if anything, because the guy who puts that into the stream of commerce has to pay for it to be disposed of. So he has an incentive to reduce, reuse, and recycle. And you want to put that incentive with the people who have control over the production of packaging. I bought a, a toy truck for my son this past weekend, and the truck was encased in a cardboard box uh, that was wired to the cardboard box within a plastic PVC plastic shell. Uh, it took me about 25 minutes to disengage the truck from its packaging, and then there was as much packaging left over as there was a product. Um, and certainly for today, for a lot of products um, that, that we buy at the store, whether it's something that we're consuming, food that we're consuming, um, whether it's an electronic device that we're buying, these are not uh, durable devices that are going to last a lifetime. These are disposable products in disposable packaging, and we're finding that we're actually generating more and more of this disposable packaging and disposable products, in part because the manufacturer bears zero responsibility for the afterlife of this packaging and the afterlife of these disposable products. We spend in New York City about $130 million a year disposing of, of waste newspaper. Well, because of that, you know, the New York Times is cutting down forests up in, in the Pacific Northwest, virgin forest, because it's cheaper for them to cut down a thousand years old, old trees and turn them into pulp, ship them across the country, than it is to recycle their newsprint in New York City. Well, of course, if you looked at the total cost to society, it's much cheaper to pick up that newspaper and recycle it. The plastic bottle you and I are drinking water from today came from the dinosaurs. Okay? We can't replace that. And to get that oil out of the ground is really detrimental to our environment, not just here in Modesto, but all around the world. So it's a global picture, um, and, but by recycling that product, it can be recycled and recycled and recycled. It doesn't just get recycled once. It has many lives behind it. And so, and a lot of people I don't think are thinking in those terms, you recycle it once and it's gone. No, you recycle and recycle and recycle and recycle. It'll keep going. Glass can be recycled indefinitely. Oil, can, motor oil from your car can be recycled indefinitely. It never wears out. It never dries up. It never gets so contaminated they can't clean it and recycle it. So each time you recycle something, you're saving another gallon being pumped out of the ground, another tree being pulled down. Uh, paper has a life of maybe six or seven times before it t literally turns to dust. And the fibers are so short, you can't recycle it and become paper anymore. I think that recycling is a great environmental issue because you can get your hands around it. I think it's really important that we start talking about recycling as more than just a landfill diversion type of program and recognize that recycling is actually a way to reduce pollution, to reduce the extraction of raw materials that we mine, um, and to actually conserve resources in a big picture way. I think if we can get that message across to the public, to get that message across from uh, across to kids, I think that can, it, it can prove to be a great motivator, um, f not just for recycling, but for environmentalism generally. Recycling is only the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to environmentalism than recycling. I would like this, the us to continue to recycle. I know a lot of people say it's a nuisance, they don't want to be bothered, but I think it's important. And I don't, and uh, so recycling is part of it, saving water is part of it. Um, 
not taking the plastic bags in the first place is part of it. All of these things uh, that have to do with saving the environment are important. We have only touched the surface.